When I was a newly appointed circuit overseer, the elders in a congregation that I was serving expressed concern about a sister who was missing meetings. They asked me if I would be willing to make a shepherding visit. Of course, I was happy to do that. The arrangements were made. Another elder accompanied me. And uh, I shared all of the appropriate verses about meeting attendance. The sister listened. And as we were leaving, she looked me in the eye. And she said, you don't have a clue. At the time, I thought she was being disrespectful. But as I thought about it, I came to wish that instead of showing up with all the appropriate verses, I had showed up with all of the appropriate questions. What do you want me to do for you? How may I help? What's been happening in your life? Those kinds of questions allow you to render meaningful assistance. I learned from that experience. I hope you can learn from my mistake. Don't make the mistake of thinking you know what a person wants or needs. Jesus did know, and he still asked. This was a really interesting little nugget in Seth Hyatt's talk during the graduation. This was the only thing in his talk that really piqued my curiosity because he's describing here making a mistake as a circuit overseer. He's describing dealing with a situation in a way that in hindsight was flawed. Apparently this is something that Seth Hyatt can do as a governing body helper, fess up to getting it wrong. We don't really see this sort of language or this sort of attitude on display by governing body members, do we? This is really the distinction now that we're seeing between a governing body member like David Splain, like Samuel Hurd, and a governing body helper. The governing body helpers have to, where appropriate, fall on their swords and show how flawed and imperfect they are. I can't really think of an example of a governing body member using this sort of language, because how could they? They have to come across as being perfect and wise. And if they were to ever show any weakness, if they were to ever show any shortcomings, what would that say about them being chosen by God? Would this, would this not be showing too much vulnerability? Would this not be sowing seeds of doubt in the minds of the brothers? No, it has to be the governing body helpers who again fall on their swords. But even though Seth Hyatt's candor is commendable, He's really showing a lot of naivety here, if you think about it. He's describing doing a shepherding visit with a Jehovah's Witness lady who was missing meetings. And it tells you a lot, by the way, that simply missing meetings will trigger a shepherding visit, not just from the elders, but the elders in this case informed the circuit overseer during the circuit overseer's visit, you need to go and see this sister She's been missing meetings. <laughs> so in steps Seth Hyatt to ride to the rescue and render spiritual aid to this sister in the form of a shepherding visit. He reads a bunch of Bible verses. And as he's leaving, the lady says to him, you don't have a clue, do you? I could fully imagine that being the attitude of someone who's realized that the Jehovah's Witness religion is not true, is in fact wrong. Not just wrong, but abusive and exploitative. I could imagine saying that if I were in the shoes of this lady. I could imagine saying, you just don't have a clue, do you? And Seth Hyatt's immediate reaction was to view this as disrespect. He since looks back on that as an opportunity where he could have shown more interest, he could have been asking questions. 
the questions he thinks would have fixed this whole problem don't really apply if you are a Jehovah's Witness who stopped believing. He is suggesting that he should have asked, What do you want me to do for you? How may I help? What's been happening in your life? None of those questions have any relevance or will help in any way if you've realized that the Jehovah's Witness religion isn't true. If you realize that you don't want any part of it anymore and can't sit through hours and hours of indoctrination because it's a waste of time and there are better things that you could be doing and you want to move on but you're in a captive organization that literally threatens you with family estrangement if you leave. How are these questions going to help? Oh, what can I do for you? What's been happening in your life? <laughs> if anything, what he's suggesting as the solution is to be more interrogatory. So you need to sit down and quiz the Jehovah's Witness who's missing meetings and ask them what's going on in their life from the viewpoint of someone who doesn't accept that there can be anything wrong with the religion. How can Seth Hyatt help if he's not in a position to change the policies? How can Seth Hyatt help if he's not in a position to fix the lies, to fix the broken promises, to fix the abuse, to stop the misery? He can't help. And it's frankly irrelevant what's been happening in someone's life. The problem is the religion, but you're never going to see the religion as the problem if you're an elder or if you're a Sokitobasir, unless you happen to be Pimo and you're in your own process of awakening and trying to extract yourself from that situation. How can you have any empathy or any real sympathy unless you realize that it's all a load of nonsense.